everyone, my name is Maddie Joy and today I'm going to tell you a time traveling story. This is the story of two people in their 80s. They're both 83, same age, uh, but they lived apart for a long time. The man's name is Matthew and the woman's name is Amy. And Amy lives in the city of Dublin, while Matthew lives in the city of Kilkenny. And they used to be best friends, the best friends of all. And they're both teachers and uh, ded dedicated their lives to helping children. Uh, but their, their path um, parted when Amy met Jordan, the man she was with for a very long time, and moved to the city to, um, to fulfill her relationship with this man, leaving her best friend Matthew behind um, in the town. And at the age of 83, uh, Matthew was quite content living in Kilkenny. He had done a fair um, deal of good deeds, uh, working with children. He had fun with his life, but something was always missing. His best friend was always missing. So one day he decided to um, contact her to see how she was doing, because as she left with Jordan, she kind of lost touch with her best friend. and. Um, with the old days, uh, with age taking over, he was starting to really miss his best friend and wondering what she, she's been up to all this time. So he took contact with her and they decided to meet back in Dublin. And that's when he, um, she told him, he realized actually that um, life hadn't been easy for her. Um, as a matter of fact, it's been um, quite, um, tough for her. Uh, she was now an old lady and um, she was living on her own in an apartment building and her days were quite the same, always the same. So she'd wake up in the morning, um, have breakfast, go for a walk, come back home, watch the news, um, have lunch, go for another walk and then she'd, um, she'd come back home, knit, do a bit of arts and crafts, and uh, watch a bit more TV and go to bed. She didn't have any children and she was um, single. And um, during their meeting, Amy told him that she always regretted leaving Kilkenny because that's when she was her happiest She'd always um, loved working with the children there, the community feeling, the, um, the lovely people around. She loved her job, she loved, and most importantly, she loved um, Matthew. And she actually told him that if she had one regret, it was not telling him how much she loved him. And not only just as a friend, but she was genuinely, truly in love with him at the time when she was 28. But she always thought he didn't love her back. And when Jordan came into her life, he showed her um, his affection. And she came to terms with uh, Matthew not loving her, or so she thought. Um, and uh, and agreed to um, and started falling in love with Jordan instead. And eventually, she moved to Dublin um, because his career was in Dublin. She could teach anywhere, but he couldn't do his work from Kilkenny, so she had to move to Dublin. But Dublin being a, a big city, she never felt the same um, community attachment. As she felt when she was living in Kilkenny. She she always felt like something was missing and work-wise she couldn't get as involved 
involved with the children and with people as she would have if she was living in her hometown. So it was complicated for her to adjust to the city. But Jordan was there and she attended to have a life with him. She stayed with Jordan for approximately 10 years. And during those 10 years, she, um, so she moved to uh, Dublin. She worked as a teacher in one of the local schools and, um, and she lived with Jordan. But the thing is, as time passed, she started noticing that Jordan was not as healthy um, as she thought he was. He started showing his true colors and telling her every day that her job was not as great as his. And it was like microaggression, like every single day was kind of, oh, you're, um, you're not making um, as much money as I do, so your job therefore is not as relevant as mine. Um, he was working for one of the big journals um, of Dublin. And uh, he kept telling her things that made her feel like she was not worthy. Not worthy of being loved, not worthy of chasing her dreams, not worthy of living the life she wanted. And the reason he was doing that is because he wanted her to quit her job in order to start a family with her and raise children. And he believes that um, if he was going to work uh, long hours at work. He wanted his wife to stay at home with the future kids and there's nothing wrong with that but the way he was doing it was by making her feel like her job was stupid and unnecessary. So she always felt like she was being kind of put down and little by little this behavior chipped her, chipped her personality chipped her feelings, chipped her sense of identity to the point that she felt like she not only she was unworthy of anything but she also was incapable of leaving the house or leaving him or leaving um, Dublin. She felt stuck and trapped and eventually after after 10 years of unhealthy relationship and being afraid of getting married and having those children they were those children they were talking about she took her courage all the courage she had in her heart and she left jordan and that was the be best thing that could have happened to her but it took imagine 10 years of being put down it took her a very long time over 20 years to start feeling like herself again to start feeling confident again but she never dared leaving Dublin to go back to Kilkenny because during those 10 years of relationship he kept telling her that Kilkenny uh, was just a small town and being concerned about it and that uh, what would she do there and who would warn her after all this time she would never find um, people to uh, to be around and she was better off staying in Dublin. It, it was really unhealthy. She was not well and she never left Dublin and she ended up an old lady um, with no children and no boyfriend, no, nobody around her. So Eris came to say hello to you guys. <laughs> Hi Eris. <laughs> go play, go play. So I was telling you all about Amy. So when um, when Matthew and Amy spoke together, she told him all about all these things. And she told him that if there was one regret she had looking back on her life was leaving Kilkenny and most importantly leaving him because she loved him so much. But she always thought he didn't love her because he never said anything. So, um, so she just assumed he didn't love her. And when Jordan came into her life, she opened herself up to loving someone who loved her back. And telling all those things to Matthew made him really um, emotional because 
um, he told her that actually, in fact, he had always loved her. But he was the one thinking she didn't love him back, so he never dared asking for anything. And when Jordan came into the picture, it made it clear to him that she had no feelings for him. So it was just a real misunderstanding. Iris, come. Iris is feeling sad for those two, but don't worry, it's a happy ending. Hi, Iris. <laughs> Go. <laughs> so, um... Sorry guys, Aries kept coming and dropping the camera. <laughs> so, um, he's bold, he's a bold face. Uh, they both realized they loved each other all this time. And Amy just took Matthew's hands and looked at him and said to him, I wish I had known you loved me and I wish you had stopped me. I'm going to Dublin and leaving everyone I loved behind. And something happened at that moment. Something quite spooky, quite magical, quite weird. At that moment, when she was holding his hands, he found himself projected back into time when they were 28 just before she left for Dublin with Jordan and he was holding her hand because she had a small cut and he was looking at it uh, to see if it was okay and um, he was basically projected back into time at that very point in time in his 28 years old body he didn't understand what had happened there and he got quite of a quite a fright you know and he tried to tell Amy um, after a while but see there's there's a rule with time traveling and that rule is um, he can't tell anyone um, it's like the law of universe, the law of magic, or whatever you call it. But what had happened to him was extraordinary, but it still had rules. And one, uh, one thing is, uh, when you travel back in time, things have a certain order. You cannot change everything. You can only work on what your purpose is. And his purpose was to fulfill Amy's wish and you uh you can't tell anybody nobody can know that you're a time, time traveler and if you try to tell someone what happens is they faint and when they wake up they don't remember what you've, you've told them so when he tried to tell amy she fainted when she woke up she didn't remember anything and that's when he understood he couldn't tell anyone he was a time traveler but how great he was 28 again. I mean, he was young, he was strong, he was in his prime and he could change things. To that point in time, the future was bright because she hadn't left yet. She was here with him and he could have a life with her if only he told her what he felt. So instead of telling her he was a time traveler, he, um, he asked her for dinner. Um, to tell her how we felt about her but she was in a relationship with Jordan so she thought he just asked her um, for dinner as friends to say goodbye or something uh, but instead he um, he told her how he felt about her and he told her um, he asked her not to leave for Dublin but the thing is Amy just couldn't believe him she didn't accept his love um, because she just thought he was saying that because she was leaving and he was afraid to lose his best friend she didn't really believe he was actually in love she just thought he was just afraid to lose her as a friend and started thinking oh now that she's someone with someone else 
he wants her but like you know like children when you play with a toy and you stop playing with that toy and then another kid takes the toy you want it back he never wanted the toy to begin with and you don't care about that toy but you, you still want it just because another kid has it so she thought that was this case with him that just because now she was with someone else and moving on with her life he, he got a bit jealous and he wanted um, uh, to prevent her from uh, moving on so she did not believe it and that was a big problem because he had to find a way to make her understand because he knew what dreadful life was waiting for her in Dublin if she went and how miserable she'd be so instead he decided to be creative he told her he, he agreed he, he told her he would respect her wishes and he wouldn't say anything about loving her anymore and that if she really loved Jordan that was her decision and he wouldn't um, come in the way then um, he, he decided to show her what she'd miss out on if she left for Dublin because remember she said what she missed uh, was also that feeling of community and um, the lovely people in Kikani and all the, um, the, the, the good work she was doing with the children and everybody around and, and that real feeling that she, if she, uh, that she lost when she went into the big city like she felt like she was lost into the that population and she her voice wasn't heard anymore or that that, that warmth that you get when you're living in a small community like like anywhere everybody knows everybody um was gone uh, when she was in Dublin. so he thought maybe if she doesn't uh, think i love her i could show her um uh, what she's gonna miss out on if she um if she leaves Kilkenny and that was extremely uh, important because basically he decided to leave himself out of the equation and to be selfless and that no matter what he wanted to prevent her from a life of misery whether he was in it or not and that was an act that was completely selfless and the universe likes that <laughs> I'll come to that. So instead of chasing her as a lover, he he um, he decided to make it impossible for her to want to leave town. And how did he do that? He contacted all the kids she worked for, the local church uh, she was um, um, going to. He contacted uh, all her friends and family and all the people she loved and decided to um, to have a farewell party for her a secret farewell party a surprise uh, so one day after school she uh, she, she was called into the main um, hallway where the kids go after school um, just to pass uh, to go to the door basically and um, and they, they had organized this, this big farewell party with everybody she ever loved. And all the kids, with the help of, of Matthew, um, who was also working in, in school, he was also a teacher, um, they all had like made little gifts, drawn, made cake. Um, they really had like gone out of their way um, to show her how much they loved her. And obviously they were they were in the confidence the confidence that we want you to stay <laughs> so they all told her how much um, they would miss uh, they would miss her and um, that they wanted her to stay uh, but without saying it out loud they just showed it to her they showed her um, so he invited the kids that were older that were no longer her students and they made speeches telling her how she changed their lives just by being the best teacher she could be and how she gave them strength to become the, um, the beautiful young adults they were um, teenagers or young adults um, they did become and, and how precious the work she did was to them, to their family and how it impacted on their lives and she was absolutely completely emotional she couldn't believe 
that just her, this tiny little person in this tiny little body could have such an impact on the community. I mean, it is one thing to work hard and to help people and to do your best, but you never get recognition. You don't do it for recognition. You just do it because you love doing it. You love interacting with people. You love helping people. You love working with people, but you don't really do it so that people will tell you anything about it. And at that point in time, she had no idea what impact she had on people. She was just doing it because she loved it. But when they told her that, she realized what she was going to miss out on. And she started questioning going to Dublin. So she went home uh, to talk to, to Jordan about it. Um, obviously, Jordan was at the party. Um, but she waited until she was home to talk to him about it and she started telling him, listen, I don't think it's a good idea for me to leave for Dublin. I, 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 lo I love you very much, but um, I can't do it. I just can't. And from there on, they had a big fight. And Jordan started showing, started showing his true colors and telling her, but your job is insignificant. You're just a teacher. Do you realize how much more money I will make? And then something hit her. He was in life for the money. Where, whereas she was in life for the joy and the love and the people. And that is something she could never live with someone who's interested in money more than in people, in love, in friendship, in good values. And at that moment she told him, I can't be with you anymore. I, I'm sorry. I just can't. You're not who I thought you were. <sighs> so they broke up. But even though they broke up and she decided to stay in Kilkenny, Matthew was still, was still stuck in the past, <laughs> in his 20 year old body, he, 28 years old body. And he, <laughs> he didn't mind. I mean, it's great. You, you, you come from being very old to being very young and, and have no back ache and no, no pain anywhere. It's great. You know, he was like, oh, if I could stay here, but he had to go back at some stage, you know, uh, but the only way he could go back is if he had fulfilled her wish and her wish was um, for him to show her, show her how much he loved her and make her stay and uh, have a life together. So that part, the part of staying was fulfilled, but not the part of him showing her how much he loved her uh, and being together. But when, um, so the next day after she broke up with, with Jordan, they, um, they met up and uh, she thanked him for, um, for showing her um, what was truly important in her life and what a big mistake it would have been had she gone in Dublin. And, um, then he looked at her and he, he just had an impulse and he kissed her. A gentle kiss on the forehead, not on the lips, on the forehead. Like a best friend with all the best intentions in the world. Just, I love you so much I couldn't see you living a life you'd regret. She looked at him and she felt so moved and so touched that someone could be so caring. That someone would have gone through the hassle of making her see the errors of her ways and prevent her from doing the biggest mistake in her life. And he, she looked at him at that moment 
and she kissed him. Now a real kiss. And at that moment, Matthew was propulsed. I don't know if you say that word in English. He was, he jumped back in his, in his old man's body. And he was kissing Amy. And they were in this big, lovely house in Kilkenny as old people with all those photos of children and grandchildren. And they had had a beautiful, wonderful life together. And now they were an old couple and their lives was full of people, of love, of joy, and of what really matters. And that is a sense of community and love and helping others. They had both lived their lives to the fullest, following their heart and their values. And they were rewarded by having a life full of people who loved them, full of children, both students and their own, grandchildren, animals, and a huge community to back them up any time they needed. <sighs> so that's it. This is the story and the aim of Amy and Matthew. I hope you liked it. <laughs> that made me cry. They're so cute as an old couple. <laughs> Who knows, maybe if you come to Kilkenny, uh, someday you could beat them. <laughs> well, I, I hope you liked the story. Thank you so much for listening. Bye everyone!